the removing tower from the game, and I kind of want to talk about it, what they could be bringing for anniversary this year, but in the meanwhile, let's be clearing this tower, <laughs> fake tower, right, that they bring every once in a while, just reusable, reusable content they have whenever they don't want to make content, which was what happened with Camilla's update, they didn't want to make content, so they just threw this in the game. I'm using this to try to do it fast because I don't know when the hell am I ever going to use Eris again. So I wanted to, you know, put it to use while I still have the opportunity to. And you know, this is like kind of cracked, really. You got the, the mono reds here and I should actually put you on the left just in case you get an extra card. And like, look, with one attack from her, I'll be doing some crazy, no, auto. Uh, I was gonna use Askenor. Okay, I still one shot. But then I remember, right? Like, again, there's no other place in the game I'm gonna be using this character, this Eris character. I'm not gonna use her on raids. Um, so, hey, whenever I have the opportunity to, I will try and sneak her in. But they're removing the real tower from the game, and I'm, they didn't give us a date, but I suspect it'll be during anniversary. So, I wanted to actually talk about some stuff I think they could be bringing for this anniversary that you might not be a big fan of. Because, if you remember the last anniversary, that was when they introduced UR Pendants. And we went all the way up to level 100 with our characters. And given that... Okay, well, that almost one shot. Given that, you know... This is what they do every anniversary. First anniversary, they introduced the concept of Super Awakening. Uh, I don't remember second anniversary. Was it Holy Re No, Holy Relics were not second anniversary because Bond did not come out for Holy Relic. That would be like my way of remembering. I don't exactly remember what second anniversary they added as a system to the game. If you guys remember, please let me know. Maybe they added level 90. Um, but I don't exactly remember. But I do remember 3rd anniversary, they added level 100. What could they add for this one as a new activity in the game and a progression system? Because when we talk about a new activity, there's going to be progression when it comes to anniversary. I think we're finally going to get the leaked upgrade for Holy Relics. If you're... No, oh, was 2nd anniversary... No, it was not upgrading cosmetics. Upgrading cosmetics was way before that. I'm really trying to... I'm gonna go back to the second anniversary patch real quick. I actually just looked up the second anniversary patch. There was no addition of progression in the game with that patch. That is surprising. Didn't recall that. There was no, like, increase in level. No new mechanic to grind. They did have, like, a bunch of rewards. Like, second anniversary was really good for rewards, but they didn't have anything new like that. They could skip for this year as well, not, not, not that, you know, I've seen it, but... I find it very hard. They have to add something to replace Tower, I feel like. And a new activity would be that. Now, if they are going with something to do with Holy Relics, like I suspect they would be, only because... I only suspect that because we got the leak for uh, Holy Relic upgrades, right? If they were true, then I would say they could easily not make an actual new activity for it, and instead, they could just put those materials on the actual Demonic Beast, so you have to actually grind non-stop Demonic Beasts to get the material to upgrade the Holy Relic. That would be actually great, because you can do as many Demonic Beasts as you want, Obviously, you spent stamina, but in comparison, right, with costume upgrade materials, you have only X amount of demons you can spawn. You can join people's demons, but you can't spawn them infinitely, right? So, that would be definitely a system I would, I would see happening. Or, if they want to be real scummy about selling packs, which is more, <laughs> I think, more feasible for them, uh, or to see them do, they could add a new activity, sort of like the time dungeon, for example, that you can only do X amount per week, and then you will get the material to upgrade the Holy Relic. And honestly, if they were to make upgrades for Holy Relics, I would love if, I don't know, 
you awaken the holy relic into a new passive, but that would take work, so I honestly don't see them doing that. What I actually see them do is, you're just gonna get a bit of stats. You know how when you upgrade the costumes, you just get like a little bit of stats, there's nothing else to it, you just get slightly more stats. Yeah, I, f <laughs> I find that to be way more reasonable for them to do than to actually give us something cool. So those are my expectations for anniversary. If you have any other like progression kind of expectations, similar to again, last anniversary was increasing levels. I would love to hear it, but while looking over anything they could do, other options were obviously increasing levels again, which they could, but it would be not only cringe, it would be kind of unfortunate because level 100 it's so nice and round, right? A hundred? Just to stop at a hundred forever would be perfect, right? Eighty always seemed a little off. <laughs> and then when ninety and a hundred, although the pro the, the progression from ninety to hundred was very extreme, and you are gear you are sorry, you are pendants being introduced in the game was kind of annoying. Uh you know, a hundred is a good number, so it's very round. Doesn't stop them from doing I don't know, 110. Right, they could definitely do that. Like other, like these mobs are 120, right? Doesn't stop them from doing anything like that, but I would, I would actually like, because levels are not progression, true progression, and they don't add up to anything. When, you, when it comes down to it, the higher your level, let's say in PvP, doesn't matter because you're probably always going to use characters at, high, at the highest possible level because it's just leveling up and the stats are basic stats it doesn't increase all stats um and your enemies are also going to be max level so it doesn't matter like it everyone being 90 everyone being 80 everyone being 60 it's all the same levels are irrelevant when it comes down to pvp and in pve when level 100 came out people are like oh but now level 100 is going to make activities easier that's not true. The new activities are just gonna scale to our characters being level 100. <laughs> so, levels are always going to be um, a useless progression stat. Now, Super Awakening. Some people were theorizing we could get Super Awakening 2. So, you know how our stars go like red or pink. It would be like stars above the pink stars, and it would give even more all stats. Now, Super Awakening is different in which the Super Awakening gives you all stats. So each character getting a different Super Awakening st like amount of stats will differ how good they actually are in the meta, depending on what they get. Uh, but realistically speaking, only the new characters will get good stuff. That's how, that's just how it is. And by God, please no. <laughs> please no. That would be so annoying. But those two methods of progression could easily, like, be done. Because it's so brain dead and easy for them to do. So I can see them do it. Wow, this, uh, this tower really is, uh... I'm so glad it's in the game. And not real tower giving the rewards right i'm so glad that they opt to you know remove tower from the game and again if they add nothing in its place giving rewards that is very unfortunate because this tower right let's say they, they keep bringing back this tower which gives okay rewards to give some costume upgrade materials whatever it doesn't give gems and gems are what people actually care about. Like, obviously, costume upgrade materials are great and needed, right? Upgrading your costumes in PvP is very relevant. People don't care, though. People, people really only care about gems. And this doesn't give gems. So it's still cool. Rewards are still nice. But no gems. I do wonder if they would bring Fever back. I highly... I highly doubt it, because they didn't bring it back for last year. But maybe they were like, uh... 
Let's skip one year. Maybe bring it back the next one because it was really, really good. And if you missed out on the second anniversary, if you weren't playing the game, Fever was this free slash paid banner. I mean, you, you got like a bunch of free multis on it. They had a shit ton of exclusive characters. So it was just a fantastic free banner. But you also had the option to spend gems on it if you wanted to. It was like kind of, you know, not too advised because the anniversary banner had the anniversary character, which was Bon, at the time the best PvP character in the game, and remained the best PvP character in the game for so long. But considering the amount of exclusive characters the banner had, just having some free multis was just fantastic. And that might be, you know, a reason for them not to bring it back. Although again, given that this is um, a year, like the fourth anniversary, and last anniversary they get they give 300 gems. What they could do is they might not want to give 400 gems for this one, because for fourth, right? Third anniversary 300, fourth anniversary 400 gems for login, and instead give fever. I don't know how people would react to that though. Again, I never have a horse in any race when it comes to like these sort of rewards because a furry banner to me is completely useless. <laughs> it is what it is. It is always completely useless to me, so I'm always in favor of them existing because it's good for the general player base. If the general player base is happy, that's great. It's really good for me. Um, but in terms of my account, it doesn't ma really matter. So it, either way for me would be great. 400 free gems for login. Sounds pretty good. Man, this team is getting old pretty quick. It's just like, I got the attack buff. I attack. I do that. Let's attack with her. Let's uh, boost her. See what she's capable of. Some people are asking me on my um, Aaron showcase what gear I was using. I did, sh I did say, but I didn't show. I'll say it again. Characters like her, I don't make you war gear, man. <laughs> she has someone else's HP defense SSR gear. If a character is not going to be used for PvP or Demonic Beast, there's no need for them to have you war gear, to be honest. Like what? You're really struggling so hard on demons. Like the. <laughs> I wouldn't even use her in demons, to be honest. Like, I don't even know where you are gear for her would be applicable. PVE only character with um, no utility outside of like something like this, which, as you can see, takes one turn. It's so funny when I got her holy relic and made a showcase on it. I had never seen her ending screen, which I played like two times by now, and I uh, I've <laughs> I audibly recoiled when I saw how awful her ending screen was. And there was a debate in the comments, man. Some people were like, yeah, that is really weird, champ. And some people were like, well, the ending screen makes sense because you see, in the anime, the protagonist is a pervert. So we're at the eyes of the protagonist. So it's a really good representation of, shut the fuck up. <laughs> now that we're getting to the final stages, I can actually see if this is better than using just Ascanor because Ascanor absolutely wipes everything. So. So far, I've just been like, okay. It's been one-shotting, but obviously anything would one-shot. Can I still fully wipe? No, that didn't do much. Ooh. That was a lot, but... The problem I have with Rudy will never end. As soon as you do the single target, no more balls. So frustrating, man. So... It's so bad using him. Like, he's genuinely like a... Unfun character to use because of this ball system. Losing all of your progress... After one attack... Is not fun. Never revive. Do it again. No. I just know that obviously Kizun's attack doesn't do much, but his AoE did a considerable amount of damage. Let's get a let's get the attack buff. And then uh, 
attack with three balls, why not? Not one turn anymore, it's three turns. Oh, this is my kill. No. Oh, she has star mailing. While we're at the end, I skipped a bit, because honestly... It just became kind of samey. It just kind of one turn everything. But is it any better than just using Askenor? No. Asker would be probably even faster because a lot of the fights I did like two turns, I could have probably done one turn because Asker is so strong. So instead of like having to build a crazy um, team for this guy, could have easily just done like a basic Asker team. Because you kind of need to like build the team around him, like have all the like the red units and stuff, or around her mostly, with the red unit stuff. Oh, buffing myself was uh, not a good idea there, was it? Oh my god, more than one attempt. Impossible. Uh, he had. Did they have Tarmia Link? I say, I mean, obviously they don't have Tarmia Link, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't recall if they healed when I attacked them. So I'm just gonna... Good damage, man. I'm assuming this is... Uh... I don't even know what that is. I probably like minus damage for uh, outside of type advantage, but even the green character took like nothing. Oh, he combined cards, okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just put on Escanor. With the power of reading, I have found that in this stage, when you have max ultimate gauge, you get 2,500% attack. So... Can I... Oh, I can't target. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do this. Next one should hit pretty hard. You know, just casual 23 million. Ow. He's gonna just can't, <laughs> can't catch a break, man. Let's get more attack. Oh, how much attack do I have? Ah, just 793,000 attack, man. <laughs> Classic, man. <laughs>